admiring of it. You know, oh, John B. Dunn, I love him. Karen was talking about hate cell phones. I also fucking hate cell phones so bad. Uh, but I love the zoo. <laughs> and one of the things I hate slash love about the cell phones is that movie theater experience when you go to see a movie and uh, some fucking self-involved twat who can't like be you know <laughs> away from that device for fucking 90 minutes. That's all it is, 90 minutes of your life that you paid to go and be away from. Uh, it's just like I feel like a junkie. I'm, oh, I fucking need to text them. Yeah, well, Sheila has chlamydia. <laughs> like, well, it doesn't mean anything. There's no reason to be doing it ever. But one person does it, and it's just like the zoo. You see the prairie dogs where one's like, yo, and then like 15 others, yo, 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 yo. To fucking tell me if I'm wrong. Go to see a movie. As soon as somebody sees that light, 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 just exactly like prairie dogs is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, I like prairie dogs. You guys don't. Fuck you. Who cares? I don't give a shit. Cares? Let's talk about hating kids. I also hate kids. I hate children. I do. I don't like them. I don't want them. I like. It's great if you have them and you love them. More power to you. I like. Without them, we don't continue as a species. So. I realize they're a necessity, but one that is evil. I don't uh, like them very much. And sometimes it's the parents of the kids that are the problem. It's not the children themselves. Like, I've been a chef for a long time in my life, and there's nothing worse when I am, like, busy in a kitchen, you know, catering a party, a wedding, whatever, and some fucking little piece of shit comes toddling into the kitchen, <laughs> followed like two feet behind by some doting mother like, oh, isn't that so cute, little Ethan is exploring his world, isn't that, it's like, unless you want him exploring the burn ward, get him the fuck out of my kitchen, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, let him fucking walk around in the broken glass factory, oh, he's just so curious, fuck off! It's unnecessary. And that's when they're at that age, where they're just like, ooh, ooh and they walk around like a fucking, it may as well be a wind-up tin toy for, you know, for all the use that they are. What else? Like, what? When they get a little older, it's even worse, and they can talk, and that's all of a sudden they are like the biggest pricks <laughs> that have ever lived, but unintentionally. They don't even, because they're just blank slates, they haven't sponged up knowledge and life experience to even know what, what they're doing, so... Like, have you ever been insulted by a child? Like, who's like two and a half or something? Oh, hey, you're so cute. Like, you're fat. <laughs> like, the kid doesn't mean it as an insult. They're just making an observation with their limited skills. And they're you're almost always right. That's the worst fucking part about it. It's like, you have weird teeth. It's like, well, fuck you. You have stage three fucking lymphoma. Screw you. And they're like, <laughs> I should have kicked that kid with cancer, I realized. It's not my fucking in front of me. <laughs> fucking little dick. Uh, the thing too about kids, I'm not even just kids, like I see here, like I have this like weird sort of I'm in this relationship with a young lady that's like half my age. And I can't get uh, past this bizarre guilt that I feel, uh, and not necessarily, because like we are two consenting adults, who cares the age difference, it doesn't matter, but like, me, inside of me, I just can't get past it. Like, I graduated high school in 1985, uh, the year I believe she was born, uh, so like, I just can't get out of my head when we're, you know, getting down, uh, that, uh, that day I could have gotten my diploma and walked out the door and into a maternity ward and looked through the glass and be like, I am fucking gonna eat your pussy. <laughs> like, I just can't get that out of my head, you know what I mean? Like, Alright, I don't want to eat a baby's pussy. I'm not saying I don't want to eat a baby's pussy. I'm saying that's the idea that I have about that. And fuck you guys, by the way, for thinking that I don't eat a baby's pussy. You know? So easily everybody's like, oh, you're a baby pussy eater. Fuck you guys. That's like, not at all, just the guilt that I feel about that, that whole thing. It's, it's weird to me. Uh, and that, like, that thing seems like I'm not, what am I? I'm just some fucking asshole. I'm, I'm 43 this year. I'll be 43 years old in November. And, like, but I'm still a little kid, I'm a total child. Like, we'll be in bed uh, together sometimes, and uh, like, I'll be like tuning her nipples like I'm a fucking World War II pilot, and like, oh, come in Tokyo! <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
put my ear to one of her breasts and with the other finger on her nipple like I'm a safe cracker trying to open a safe. Oh, what's the combination? And open her legs and count all the money after I'm successful. <laughs> she sticks around for this. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? How low is your self-esteem that you're with this <laughs> willingly? Like, what's the fucking problem? It's so weird. <laughs> For a while, we like were apart, and uh, she started to date a black guy, and that, like that's cool. Like you know, I don't have a problem with that, but I have uh, like a, this. Like okay, listen, all stereotypes and you know, racism in general is just based in ignorance, right? It's just that's what the root of that stuff is. You, you know, you know, hate black people. You probably haven't spent a lot of time around black people. That's probably all there is to it. For me, I have this sort of like, oh, what? There's a, like, she's gonna have sex with this. Like, and at the core, it was like, listen. I spent a long time. Here's the parable. That I'm here's the parable that I made. I spent a long time playing that Donkey Kong machine, getting to know it, so that I could get the high score. You know what I mean? I don't need this guy coming along with his giant fucking black cock and with one quarter putting his fucking name above mine. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know if he has a fucking huge cock. That's a, that's what I'm saying. It's a stereotype based in ignorance. And, like, and the worst part about this is every. <laughs> this is the one stereotype that they help propagate themselves. You ask a black guy if he has a huge cock, guess what he's telling you? Like I'm like I play I haven't seen a lot of cocks in my life. Uh, and the ones I have seen are white, because I only you know, I played hockey. So like there's not a lot of black dudes in the locker room in a fucking after a hockey game. Uh, the, you know, here's like I have this false idea like what that, uh, you know, that, oh, there's a near-fatal car accident and the fire department's not here with the jaws of life. Well, that black guy could just get an erection and rip the door off with his head <laughs> away. <laughs> She's like, you have to, don't get it in my eye! Like, it's, you know, it's stupid. It's so weird to think of it in those terms. And that's the other, like, that's the other thing too. That's not like sort of a like genitalia common like section. There's no black woman. Uh, you know, nobody thinks that they've got like cavernous vaginas. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nobody thinks that. Uh, <laughs> that thought wasn't uh, very well fleshed out. But that's right. <laughs> that I'm scared of is like, uh, I'm foster just scared of, like I'm afraid of black penises, it's like, oh no! Like, I'm also claustrophobic, and uh, I, for those of you who've seen me before know that I've like, you know, battled with uh, cancer a couple times, like I went to go to uh, get an uh, MRI, and uh, the part of that process is you have to, well first of all, they get you in this little room and you like put on this, and, all right, first of all, can we just like fuck off with the miniature Barbie dress they give you to put on whenever you go to a hospital? I'm six feet four inches tall, they give me this blue thing that like, there's no way you're, you have to be a fucking Chinese uh, gymnast contortionist to do it up to begin with. Uh, but then they're like, you, you come out, okay, it's my turn to get the MRI, great. And then they're like, okay, just sit down. Are you fucking kidding me? I got a thing that I'm like doing this with as it is, I got to sit down, but like, how is that? You know, you know, how, how, okay, I'll just cross my, no. I look like I'm sitting on two angry plums if I do that. I'll well, just sit on the edge of the seat. No, like I'm James Bond in Quantum of Solace with everything. Hey, a guy with a knot of rope's gonna whack me. What the fuck do I do? Like, there's no way to sit wearing that fucking thing. So you walk in to get it uh, to the MRI room, and it's uh, this. It's like this gigantic room with this little machine in the middle of it. Like it's they're trying to trick me, you know. Like, oh no, They're like, oh, yeah, all the space in the world before we slide you into this baby coffin. Like, that. <laughs> and so, like, literally, you go on a gangplank and they, like, feed you into this circular fucking little coffin. And, like, they have this much room. And, like, I am claustrophobic. We get in there and he's, like, just lie down. I'm like, I, you're, I, you're, I, you're, you're putting me in that? And he's like, oh, no, are you claustrophobic? Uh, no, i you know, I'm just dumb. I <laughs> can't figure out what the f Yes, I'm fucking claustrophobic. So his, he says, oh, no problem. And he puts up, he goes, here's how we'll do, do this. He folds a face cloth in half and puts it over my eyes. <laughs> oh, that's much better. Thank you very much. Look, I'm, I'm not I'm fucking afraid of small spaces. I'm not retarded. Dad, just hit the button on the left there. I'm nearly off the stage. Thanks. 
Uh, I've lost my train of thought. Where was I talking about? I was talking about not being retarded. Oh yeah, now, now listen, the Olympics... Uh, you have your regular Olympics, and you have your Special Olympics. And I think that the Special Olympics don't enjoy the same kind of ratings that the uh, normal Olympics get, and uh, here's why. I think that if they were just to introduce boxing as a sport, they would surpass the regular Olympics with no fucking problem. And I'm not, listen, I don't mean just two retarded guys boxing. I, uh, I'm like, I'd love to see a one-legged guy fight a blind dude, you know what I mean? Like, that would be awesome, but let's not kid ourselves. It's the gold medal fucking downs on downs, gold medal match, and we all want to see. I like, I'm inviting people over for beer and pizza to watch that. Uh, but I think the onus would have to be on the culture. You know what I mean? You have to coach them in a very specific way so that they would, because the, by their nature, they're gentle. Like the, co the coaching would have to de-emphasize the clinch because that's just going to turn into a prolonged hub. Like, you're my friend, you're my friend. You know what I mean? We'd have, we have to tell one guy that the other guy hates The Rock or professional wrestling. And it's all about, Ooh. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks again.